So this is the Anza Borrego Desert, I think I'm saying that right, in Southern California. This is where I've been for the last couple days. Uh, it's really known for its beauty, its landscapes, the mountains, and the wildflowers. A lot of people come to photograph and mesmerize over the wildflowers. But starting in 2008, it became famous for something else. These awesome sculptures. Now there's 131 of these things scattered all throughout the desert, all over the place. You have to really look for them, drive around and take some dirt paths down to see them all. Some are gigantic, like this scorpion, and some are smaller, but all have an amazing presence. These are all the work by an artist named Ricardo Brasida. I hope I'm saying his name right. I mean, look at the detail. They were all done with this um, a crude style of welding, which I think adds to the look of it. I think it's perfect for out here in the desert. Now this land used to be owned by a man named Avery, the last name Avery. And he allowed people to come onto his land and camp and enjoy it because it was so beautiful. I think now it's all state owned, but um, he saw Ricardo's artwork and he said, hey, can you make me some of those? So Ricardo made a couple of them and they put them out here and he wasn't sure how people were gonna feel about them, if they were gonna like them or not. And overnight they were a complete sensation. That was back in 2008. And for years to come, Ricardo created a whole bunch of them, all different ones and put them all around and they are a huge draw to this area now. People come from all over the place to see these amazing sculptures. From what I've read, the original sculptures here were insects and creatures that were native to this desert, to this land. And then over time, Ricardo decided to make things like dinosaurs and there's a Jeep here and there's all kinds of interesting things. So like I said, there's 131 of these. So I'm not gonna be able to get them all in this video, but I'm going to show you some of my favorites and some of the more interesting ones. So probably one of the more elaborate ones out here, and certainly the biggest, is this incredible serpent with a dragon head on it. So you can actually see, I mean, look at the detail with the tongue and the teeth. This serpent is 350 feet long. Originally, it was only supposed to be 75 feet long, but as you can see, in comparison, that would be way too short for a dragon-headed serpent. So it's a serpent with a dragon head and a rattlesnake tail. And you can really get a good idea of how it's welded together. Pretty crude style of welding, but it really goes with it. It really, it fits. So just giving you an idea of what it's like walking around here. There's all these little sand, gravel paths that are in between the roads, the main roads. And everywhere you look has a beautiful mountainous background. So check this one out. This is one of the more interesting ones. And I believe this was the last one, number 131, out of the sculptures that were created. And this one is pretty, pretty detailed. It's got the guy driving with the sunglasses and I mean, you can even see it's got the gauges. You can almost get in this thing and drive away. Look at even the mufflers. 
the drivetrain. I mean, they knew that it was going to be viewable. The wheels don't turn. But this is a Willys Jeep designed to honor the history of the Jeep. I believe in the wars. You can even see on this side, it's a little darker, but you can see the shovels. It says Galleta Meadows, Galleta Meadows. Look, it even has the gas tank on the back and the spare tire. I love this. Very cool. So this is a pretty good one. This is a giant sloth with the baby on the back. So when Ricardo created this one, uh, it came with some controversy because people said that the baby never climbs on top of the mother and travels around like that. So Ricardo actually went to Costa Rica and saw for himself that indeed they do do that. So rather than tearing it down, like a lot of people asked him to do, he said, nope, I'm going to keep it. And I'm glad he did, because this is one of my favorites. There's actually two tortoises here. These are probably my favorite. They're about four feet tall or something. I love how they did this, how he did this with the legs. Very interesting. This is so funny. Are you a hungry fella? <laughs> that is hilarious. Again, very crude design, just cut metal, in a circular pattern and then stamped it. Let's see if this thing is hollow. Yep. You can see up inside there. Let's see what it looks like. Pretty cool. Coming up on a dinosaur. I think this is supposed to be a dinosaur. That car in the background gives you some scale of how big it is. See, this is one of the big elephants. And you can see how beautifully it blends in with the landscape. These were probably not so rusty when they were new, but I think they're designed to just weather away and not to be repaired or anything like that. Look at this one. This is, this one is definitely more of the very detailed oriented sculptures. Some are more detailed than others. You could tell the ones that he did earlier on versus the one that he did later when he developed much better skills. And this one is so detailed with the wings and everything. This is huge too. I mean, it probably stands, I don't know, 15 feet high, something like that. So it's a, it's a nest and you got these birds coming out and there's a snake. The bigger bird has this snake in its clutches. Look at that. And obviously because of weight issues, these poles hold up the, uh, hold up these wings. I wonder how much this thing weighs. Probably a lot. Old Ricardo definitely outdid himself on this one. So if you're ever in the Southern California area, definitely come and check out the Anza Borrego Desert. I'm sure I'm butchering that name, but uh, it is truly, truly beautiful out here. I'm gonna get back on the road. I'll see you in the next video.